Hello and welcome back to Shadowrun Returns. The last time we did a run that went that seemingly went horribly, but yet it paid off in the end. And it's actually going to pay off when we get to the estate. From the floor of the Lone Star Cruiser, you watch the tops of the downtown corridor office buildings disappear, replaced by the gray overcast over the I-90 bridge. The nylon restraints binding your wrists and anklets, along with McCluskey's whistling to the radio, making an unpleasant ride. Half hour later, the cruiser hits a whisper smooth patch of road, and a magnificent mansion fills your view. Its design, a blend of old world finery and elvish grace. The car pulls up to an abrupt halt, and you're dragged onto the driveway, where McCluskey pulls a nasty looking knife and cuts your bonds. You look up to see you're surrounded by a squad of green clad ghosts, special force troops from Tir Tangnari. Tir Tangiri. Tin. Tin Tar. Giri. Yeah, okay. Tin Tangiri. Tir Tangiri. I'll go with that. Massaging the feeling back in. To your numb extremities, you prepare to meet the man himself, James Telestrian III. Okay. Fussy elf with an air Victorian butler studies you before he speaks. He doesn't like what he sees. Mr. Terrestrian's expecting you. You will find him in his office. Thank you, Chief. Delighted to be of service. You may wait here for a few moments to gather yourself before you enter Mr. Terrestrian's office. Some people find that they need time to prepare themselves for meeting an elf of this stature. However, the upstairs is off limits to you. And the library is occupied at the moment. Do not hide, though. Mr. Terrestrian is not one to be kept waiting long. Mr. Quoth, nevermore. Want some advice, moron? Of course you don't. You're a shadow runner and you live by your own rules, don't you? <clears throat> I suggest you keep your smart ass remarks to yourself this time, Mr. Telestri. If some street me you can impress or intimidate, he's the brains behind the throne of Tyr. Tarn Gay. And one of the richest men in Seattle. Should I be impressed? No! You go ahead and in there and keep talking trash. That should work out fine for you, drag for brains. You got no money and no power. So what do you got? I have... Indigestion. You're dumb and I thought. Enjoy your chat. I'll dispose of your body later. Good chat, man. Good chat. <laughs> that you a dumbass. I know. Thank you. I live to serve to make you the asshole in the group. Thank you. As you approach, James Telestrian III looks up from 
the computer screen built into his surface of his desk and assesses you. Cold and calculating, a practiced smile comes to his face. He vibes the kind of rich you don't get from tribute. It's not the clothing or the trappings or the bow before your bed is mentioned. It's something else. The feeling that you're being categorized as a resource, liability, or pawn. I have been reviewing the results of your visit to my Seattle office last night. I admit, they are impressive. You have generated a considerable amount of damage to my office complex, killed or wounded many of my security personnel, and cost my vice president of security his job. In 24 hours, you have accumulated quite a bit of me, sir. How? Do you intend to settle your debt? Well, since I I have unlocked a new etiquette, I will put on my glasses and say the following. You know, you know, we gotta be um, we gotta be formal around here. So therefore, once my current assignment is complete, I would be happy to discuss working off my debt to you, Mr. Telestrian. That discussion may happen one day, assuming the outcome of this conversation does not result in your immediate termination. When one is in my debt, they remain in my debt. Until such a time that I decide that debt is repaid, there will be no negotiation on that point. However, you have one piece of information which you might use as a bargaining chip in the little time you have left to live. Why you took what you took. I am interested to know why you and your team of criminals fought your way through my security teams up to my private office to access the matrix and uncover the location of a simple research program. It goes like this, your half-brother Sam Watts hired me to find his killer, his own killer. He had a dead man switch, when I find a killer, I get paid. You impress me, sir. My father's masters are intentionally not well known, even to themselves. Nevertheless, I fail to see the connection between this Sam Watts death and a raid on one of my office buildings. There is no connection between the research process project and the dead man that I'm aware of. Sam was killed by your half-sister, Jessica. Jessica's protected by giant bugs. Aegis kills giant bugs. Kill the bugs. Kill Jessica. Get paid. I find your bluntness somehow refreshing. Push your button on. On its head. Mr. Quolf, please ask my daughter to join us. The pretty young elf has dark circles around under her eyes and a haunted expression on her face. She recognizes you instantly. It's... You! You're the man who helped me escape from the Universal Brotherhood! How did you get here? Cuts in quick. He cuts in quickly. Thank you, Maria Louise. You have confirmed the identity of your rescuer and given me reason to forgive him for his trespasses against me. She looks hungry for you. I'm glad you're here. Good to see you got out, okay, Maria? I'm not okay. I can't sleep at all. I'm afraid that, that this is a dream. Um, and then I'll wake up there and still be there. With the bugs. You can relax, Marie Louise. If you are safe, it is over. No! It won't be over until they're all dead! You didn't see them. You don't understand. You and those men you flew in here! All you do is talk. It's just like you to form a committee. Fa 
father! I knew that someone had to take action. That's why I got Hakim involved. The already cold exterior of James Telestrian turns to ice. I see. It was you. And your crippled little friend who beat the ages to snap. We will speak of it later in private. Now then, Blackjack, the, uh, there are people I wished you to meet. The committee my daughter alluded to. This is a rare opportunity for a man of the streets such as yourself. I urge you to behave. We will adjourn to the library. I will be delighted. I don't know if that is sarcasm or not, just behave. It's Snark, sir. There's a weight in Telestrian's library, a sense of magnitude and a purpose. You're no longer in the presence of mere wealth, you are in the presence of history. Lady and gentlemen, this is Black Jack. He is the orc who saved my daughter and the only one who has faced our common enemy in combat. Er, Brokos. What does the representative of the Grey Dragon, Belfiel, have to tell us about the magical insect this Shadow Runner uncovered? Well, let me remind you. This leads to the sequel known as Dragonfall. Just by the name alone, Le Huia. Le Huia. Brokos speaks slowly with a deep, melodious German accent. He takes his time, insinuating each word, relishing every vowel in each consonant, tasting them as if they were. My lord, your fair health witnessed the insect spirit's physical manifestation before. Roughly, my thousand years ago. As you are aware, magic ebbs and wound falls from the earth, seeking from peak to peak over the course of 5,200 years, as the level of magic grows. Hans, dear, I love you, but you could babble on forever, and I believe. Time is of the essence, the painted elf addressed you. Black Jack, is it? Delighted. The bug you fought was not merely a magically awakened animal like a wyvern, or hydra, or anything else in the six worlds. In fact, it isn't from this world at all. It's the physical embodiment of an insect spirit from another plane of existence. I imagine moving from one point of existence to another isn't easy. Correct. Perhaps that German can tell you all about it at length someday. He's got plenty of time to chit chat. Now, an insect spirit can't simply thumb a ride through astral space and show up on Earth late for dinner. Dinner in this case being us. Two elements are required to bring one across the void. Shaman and host. First, the spirit calls upon the shaman, often in dreams. The spirit seduces the shaman with promises of great power. The shaman then accepts the spirit as his totem. Next, the insect spirit requires a suitable host. The best candidates are the disaffected and the disenfranchised, in short, the weak wheel. Their minds are the most susceptible to suggestion, which is helpful in making the transformation. As you may imagine, these are the sort of people easily attracted to a cult, such as the Universal Brotherhood. Finally, by performing what has to be a truly disgusting ritual, 
the shaman serving as the insect totem enhanced the spirit into the most in, into the host willingly or not. Then it's feeding time. I could yes. Quiet. The insect spirit would then slowly consume its host. The transforming it into the spirit's own insectoid body, thus manifesting itself fully on this plan. Ugh. This bugs from another in this bugs from another dimension need killing. I get it. No, you don't get it. Not by a long shot. This is bigger than hunting down an insect shaman or putting a few 9mm bounds into a bug. Initial bugs prepare nests for the summoning of a queen. Once a nest has its queen, she literally explodes. With newly infested insect spirits. Oh, I... I literally exploded right there. <laughs> they swarm out of nests, feasting on the flesh they can find and implanting more insect spirits into the fresh corpses. Again, and again, and again. The room falls silent as they all consider the scenario. Face is grim. Cholesterol breaks the silence. This is not an infestation, Black John. It is an invasion. My lord, the fire, no, the fire would come, but he did not know precisely when or where. Your rescue of Mr. Taretsun's daughter has exposed the existence of an insect spirit for the first time in this cycle of the world. Huh, so you're early to the party this time, that gives you the upper hand, right? We are not early. We are merely we merely have experience on our side. The insect sphere is only a resident in the transformed host body. Conventional weapons can hurt the body and expose the spirit, but the spirit itself cannot be destroyed by mundane means. Hunt Project Aegis. Our terrestrians biotechnology and agricultural decisions work with my lord, your father's thermotrosal. Thermotrosal engineers and design project Aegis to destroy an insect spirit once it is released from its host. The formula of fluorescing astrobacteria strain exists in the physical and astral plane at once and can thus affect the insect insect spirit. Now that was a mouthful. Did you memorize it or are you reading it off index cards? My director of R&D, Diane Ravenwood, will explain how Project Aegis will be used in the field. Uh, Dr. Ravenwood. Our weapons specialist, our weapons specialist have rapidly prototyped a delivery device for the fluorescing astral bacteria strain. They've created some prototype launchers, which fire Aegis field shells. When fired, the shells will discharge a high velocity stream of the bacteria. In order to destroy one of the bugs, it must be first damaged using conventional weapons of magic until the spirit is released from the host's body. Then the answer spirit must be shot with the Project Aegis prototype launcher to destroy it. Aegis are multi-dimensional bugs, right? Crudely, but... Crudely put, but accurate. We must stop the Universal Brotherhood from summoning a queen, and we must stop them immediately. You are the only one who has been inside the facility, and the only one who has personally fought these creatures before. That's along with your highly effective assault 
Upon my property, it indicates that you are the ideal person to be the attacked. Well, flatter. The painted out grins and his lipstick catches the light. You should be. Come on, kid. When fate taps you on the shoulder, you gotta pay attention. Unfortunately, she has a nasty habit of tapping you on the opposite shoulder. So that when you turn around, she's on your side, giggling like a deranged schoolgirl. <laughs> I hate that. Enough. Are you willing to undergo this mission, Blackjack? Yeah, I man, killing bugs. Show me how to use Aegis and I'll get it done. And just remember Exit. He claps his head as if seeing the circus for the first time. I love the way that the short lived are willing to die even faster. It's very inspirational. <laughs> Marcus raises his hand and Harquin's clapping as he stops. There is one final moment of warning, Kajora. You have seen the danger the insects were represent, but you have not witnessed the shaman's power. The shaman must tap into a powerful source of magic in order to summon a queen. We do not know what abilities that power source will grant. Be aware of the insects, but do not underestimate the shaman. Hey, don't scare Kid Hansel. We still need him to go on the mission. By the by, I'm coming with you, Blackjack. I wouldn't mind seeing these creatures for myself. I missed them last time. Pedestrian will bankroll you so you can hide the rest of the team. Find me when you're ready to go and we'll bug right out of here. <sighs> yes, speak with Harlequin when you are ready to depart. If you wish to acquire additional supplies for your mission, by my assistant, Quoth. He is highly resourceful. Thank you. Thank you. And as for my karma, Of course, I need more power, so there you go. Ah. 
I was listening, it sounds bad. Yep. Thank you for everything. Piece of cake. I didn't I don't think so. But thanks for the reassurance. You look like you have a question. Was that cream who helped you in the matrix? She smiles and looks. Yes. Even after my father ruined his life and convinced me to hate him. He's still been watching over me. My angel in cyberspace. Baron Samiri. After we escaped, I told Hakim about the Brotherhood and about the bugs. It's his idea to steal Project Ages so you could go back into the Universal Brotherhood and exterminate the bugs. But I just don't know how he knew about it. Baron Samiri just knows things. What do Lynn and the universe and the UB want with you? Aunt Lynn was very excited to have me there, almost manic. She also she talked about the inner circle and how it was going to be at its center. She said I would be their queen when she spoke. Seeing she, it's as it was as if she's in God or something. Her eyes close and she hugs herself tightly. But it's not God she sees. Bugs. I like bugs. <clears throat> Why were you locked up at the UB? Father didn't approve of my boyfriend and tried to scare him off. Something went wrong and Hakim ended up in a wheelchair. Father covered the whole thing up and lied to me about Hakim. He told me he told me horrible things. And I believed him. My Aunt Lynn told me the truth about Hakim and how my father lied. She preyed upon my anger. I was so disgusted with him. It was easy for her to get me to leave and join her new family at the UB. So what did he tell you about us breaking into your father's office? Nothing. I hadn't spoken to him last night. Why? What happened? He hasn't contacted you. No, I thought he would by now. Did something happen to him? Uh, sure he's okay. He was in the Matrix the whole time. That's what I thought. Hakim's amazing in the Matrix. I'm sure I'll hear from him soon. That should go. What's up, fat ass? You gonna die, asshole. Maybe, but I'm gonna live first. You'll still die screaming. Love you too, asshole. Love you too. Oh, there you is. In addition to the ages that it launches, we will provide. I am authorized to outfit you with anything from women to supplies to clothing. Gear, please.
Then I'll take this. Thank you. Let's see drones. I know. Okay, you, Mr. Remington. Outfits, please. Hmm. <laughs> 
That helps, thank you. Oh yeah, that, that definitely helps. Are you ready to get knee deep into ectoplasm? Yeah, let's go stomp some bugs. I thought you'd never ask. Okay, let me see. One on one. I suppose you should know. Telestrians, technicians only had time to create a few prototype Aegis launchers. I'll be taking one naturally, and as for you, treat it well. If you want additional bug splattering power, James has agreed to allow one of his personality guard to accompany us with the final prototype. And now, let us away. We have a date with Destiny, and she doesn't like to be kept waiting. Of course, Kefka. Of course. Of course, I gotta take my girl with me. Ignores the path. <laughs> I like his name. Ignores the path. Like, you ignore. Yes, he ignores the path. to represent so head to dive beneath the UB we got kiss and boogie the hunt begins your return to the Universal Brotherhood is anything but subtle 
The team hits the same back door Coyote found and you storm through, quickly making your way into the restricted area and the room where you last met Jessica and first encountered the bug. You stand there together, listening to the sounds of chittering coming from the somewhere distant. Harlequin stares into the darkness, humming tunelessly while fingering the sword of his, on his hip. Then he turns, lifts his Aegis launcher to his lips, and gives it a kiss. You give the signal, and the hunt begins. Time to hunt. That side door you found last time you were here was helpful. We avoided all those Universal Brotherhood spa cult yahoos. Telestrians, right? You're a real valiant. Alequin grins a wide predatory grin. Both sets of his pearly white teeth offset by the livid red lipstick around his mouth. Now, the fun begins. I'm ready. The ambiance is <clears throat> so. Da, da, 
be so dark. Let it be The happy, happy Joker! Happy, happy Joker! Let it out. 
And now it shows its true colors.
Thank you. Bring in your dad. Just reload. Then you can do. Just reload. It's 
another one. Hello. playing map of the dough. carefully and cautiously curve around.
통신 That's a lot past the bitch. Hey, I didn't make him hell. Set move up and kill him, damn it. Thank you. I said move up and kill him, I said move up and kill him.
really what it is. Spare gun. Ray gun! Ray gun! Ray gun! Damn it. Ray gun. Reload. Some bitch is hiding. I know. Don't be scared. It won't hurt much. Perfect time. Sit! Ray gun. More ray gun.
done and dusted. Well, we found the exit. This place is clean. Yeah, I think this is this has gone long enough. So with that, I'm actually going to stop right here and in the next part we're going into the depths. This might be the last trip down to hell, but then again This is Shadowrun. Hell's just regular here. So stay tuned more Shadowrun returns right after this. Thanks so much for watching.